Hi everyone, this is Sash Kazaminijad with ID8 Software, and I'm going to show you some of the ways in which you can use ID8 Renumber to renumber your Revit elements through Revit schedules. Uh, for this particular example, I'm going to use uh, lighting fixtures and uh, electrical fixtures, and uh, I'm going to be using an electrical file with an architect's link. And the reason why is the architect um, has uh, several rooms in here, and one of my first goals would be to match up my space numbers and my space names with the architect's room names and room numbers. To do that, I'm going to go to ID8 Software and look for ID8 Apps, and then I'm going to click on Renumber. And for this first example, I'm going to use a couple of the uh, rules that ship with renumber, which is space name from room and space number from room. I'll start with space name from room. And in this case, I'm going to use the auto number by view. And what that's going to do is it's going to look for the room, uh, room names and match those up to the space names. So I'll go ahead and hit start numbering. And we can see over here that it says SP-Overflow. And the reason why it's putting SPs in here is because if I hit cancel and come back, we had given the users uh, the option to uh, put a prefix in here. And if you don't want that, I can certainly remove that and change it up a little bit. And if I come back to start numbering, we can now see that there will be less spaces uh, that get renumbered because uh, we're not putting the SP in front of that. And so keep an eye out over here when I hit accept changes. And what's going to happen now is the space name matches the architect's room name. So again, that rule actually ships with renumber. Now what I want to do is I want to do the space number from room. And before I actually do that, I'll just show you the electrical fixtures uh, schedule that I have over here. And we can see here that, um, that I have some uh, kind of outdated space numbers that show like 2 and 4. So keep an eye on how this uh, schedule looks. And same with this one as well. Now I'm going to come back over here and go to renumber. And then I will pick the space number from room. And just like the space name from room, we're going to scan this uh, level and find all the rooms. And uh, the architect's uh, room numbers are now going to show up in the electrical's uh, space numbers. And we can scan the list to see what's changed. In this case, it's everything. I'll hit accept changes. And we can now see that they're all matching up. OK, so that's the, uh, the, the first step. I'll come over to the electrical fixture schedule, and it looks very different now. And the reason why is if I come over to my sorting and grouping, uh, we're sorting by level and then by space numbers. So because the space numbers have changed, uh, the schedule now looks different. Now, before we uh, uh, renumber our electrical fixtures and lighting fixtures, it's important to note that uh, it, would, it helps drastically if you sort your schedule um, kind of in the order in which you want your fixtures to uh, organize. So in this case, I'm saying by level, uh, then by the space number itself, and then by the mark value. And in this case, it's the kind of the current mark value um, over here. OK, I'll go ahead and hit ID8 software, and I'm going to come over to uh, renumber. So the goal of this particular uh, renumbering exercise is to renumber all my uh, mark values for my electrical fixtures using the space number as part of the mark value. We can see that one rule shows up over here, and this is one that I created um, as a custom rule. And I'll just take a quick look at this one. Uh, the way that was created was I would uh, hit new. And renumber is going to recognize the category or categories of elements that are visible in the uh, view that you're in. And it will display the uh, categories right here. In this case, we only have electrical fixtures. I would hit Next and give it a name. And then I would edit the rules afterwards. In this case, it's this one right here. I'll hit Edit. And what we're going to be targeting is the mark value. So the data that we end up with over here, all this concatenated data is going to get pushed into the mark value. The rule was set up to have a constant, a field, and an increment. So the constant in this case would be a value that would uh, be optional um, in front of the uh, numbering scheme for the mark. In this case, I'm saying let's try EL for electrical. But let's prompt the user to uh, either use this value or change it if they want to. And then I gave it a name here called prefix. And that's what we're seeing right here. The next one for the uh, field, we are using the space number. But you're not limited to just a space number. You can use other parameters within your Revit model to actually use for a string 
uh, to renumber the mark uh, values for your Revit elements. And if I scroll up and down this list, we have a lot of other types of parameter data that we can use in lieu of the space if you wanted to use that as part of your mark value. But as I mentioned before, I'm really interested in using the space number as part of my numbering schema. And then finally, I'm going to add an increment. We can see over here we have uh, the increment. And the reason why it's grayed out is it's because it's, it's, it's being used. And if I double click on that, we're starting at dash 01, and we're going to increment it on a per space uh, basis. And you can change this to dash A or dash 001 or whatever you want it to be. And this will automatically have a, a prompt when we go to renumber. So I'll uh, close this out and hit OK. And here's what that looks like. There's that prefix I was talking about. And here is that uh, start increment. And by default, we're doing dash 01, but you can also just change it here if you wanted to. So for example, if I wanted to say, you know, dash A, I could certainly do that, or dash capital A, whatever you want it to be. So we recognize if it's A, it's going to be A, B, C, D. And if it's dash 01, it'll be dash 01, dash 02, and so forth. I'll leave it uh, like that. And here's that optional prefix. And again, if I don't want it in there, I can certainly clear it out and I would end up with that. But I do like having EL to kind of represent electrical. So we're going to auto number by view. It's going to renumber in this order. And we're going to show you this preview and we can see it right over here. And we can see we have several 193s and that's because space number 193 in this case has eight electrical fixtures that uh, showed up in that particular space. But when I get to the next space, we can see that the, uh, the increment value has restarted, and that's because it's on a per space basis. When I hit accept changes, we're going to see that these now all renumber. And as I mentioned before, it's on a per space basis. The lighting fixtures is going to be the same exact way. If I come over here to renumber, we can see here um, that I have a lighting fixtures, um, space and increment. And like the electrical fixtures, this rule was created in the same exact manner. However, this time we are targeting the category called lighting fixtures, and we're going to push the data into the mark value. Um, uh, here's the prefix that I created by default for this rule, but because I am prompting the user for the value, you can certainly change it if you want. And I'll go ahead and do that. And we can see all the changes are going to happen here. And just like that, we can see now that these lighting fixtures have renumbered based on my prefix, my space number, and my increment value. And if you end up with situations like this, it may just be that this fixture did not uh, find a space. And so you can go back and um, adjust the space if you need to, or adjust the fixture so that it does show up. And then you can go back and use renumber to uh, fix it. Or you can certainly manually come in here for this one if you want to uh, and uh, renumber. I hope you found this video informative. And if you have any questions or feature requests, please be sure to visit our website at www.id8software.com. Thank you.